name is Davis. Gideon Davis, and this is my story. I suppose as good a place to begin would be the end. The end found me working at a law firm in Tel Aviv representing the British Embassy. It was there at the annual British Ambassador's Garden Party celebrating the Queen's birthday. The party was in full swing. The bagpipe band was playing and smoked salmon freshly flown in from Scotland. I walked past the, the VIPs and I found myself amongst a group of military attachés. There was one in the Royal Navy uniform. I stared. He turned and nodded with a coarse, polite smile. And then I saw him. Look. The blood drained, petrified look and the hatred in his eyes. But no one was there. I looked again and I saw the officer standing there, still smiling politely, and he nodded once more and turned back into his conversation. I stumbled to a chair away from the crowd. I thought I'd gotten over this years ago. Will I ever? He's a bloody good batter, yellow streak and all. I suppose you're right. What's in your favoritism? Oh, uh, there's a new batch of officers on the way through, and we'll get one. I think you want to give them to Mr. Rogers, the two. Mm. I wonder if he's had any combat experience at all. I hate the job of breaking them in. It can be unnerving, I know, sir. Tell me, Stokes. How do we conscript officers great against the regulars? You've had plenty of experience with both. Well, sir, the first did hold the line when the bubble burst. They're a hell of a cost. 
A regular soldier's drill to accept that. A conscript soldier, he needs his own kind of officer's drill. Spoken like a diplomat, Sergeant. Huh. Why haven't you put in your, for your commission? I would say that you've got all the makings of a splendid officer. I thank you, sir, but I... Well, I, I mean, I hope you won't take it wrong, but you don't seem to be the calm and guard and regular NCO. Listen, sir, it's a longer messy story. Some of the time, eh? Of course. Uh, right. right. I'll see you to the lights. Captain Davis? Good morning, sir. Reporting for duty. Do you have a name? Sorry, sir. The readings were Travis, Gerald. I see. Um, didn't they teach you not to salute captains or uh, to drop rank and sir? Well, yes, they did, sir. I, I mean, Davis. I saw three months ago, I just heard everyone all over the place. It takes time to use the privilege. Um, welcome aboard, Riddling to Travis. Funny you should use that naval expression. I was brought up in a Navy family. Heard it all the time. Now, this is Sergeant Major Stokes, sir, the most important man in our company. <laughs> I'll show you the ropes later on. Pleased to meet you, sir. Let me know if I can be any assistance. I'll see some food and arrange a team sentence for you. A naval family, and you land in the PBI. How come? Actually, I hate the sea and the idea of fighting, which upsets the family. My father being a rear admiral and my brother's naval officers, strings were pulled to get me commissioned into the infantry. So here I am, instead of in a city broker's office. I see. But, look. Loosen up and make yourself comfortable. You look ready for your passing out parade in this precious little spit of cold here. Davis, listen. I... I don't really... Never mind. Relax, old chap. It'll be all right. Thanks, Davis. I say, are you Welsh? No, no, I'm not. I knew a couple of chaps from Swansea at school. Didn't like them much. They were connivers. Almost as bad as the Hebrews. <laughs> Brilliant with Travis, let's get one thing straight. I'll have no racist remarks in my company. And for your information, I am a Hebrew. I didn't mean to say all Jews. Shut up, for God's sake. <laughs> Sorry, sir. I mean neighbors. Right. Um, let's forget about it. Did you hear anything at Battalion HQ that will let us know what's going to happen next? I almost forgotten. I had a memo for you from the CO. And a letter. <laughs> We cannot afford to almost forget things here, Rillings with Travis, so <coughs> black up, will you? Well, um, it's not a job I would volunteer for. 